Hi everybody, I'm Alex from the Synthesis Development Team and today we're going to be going over how to set up joints inside of your Fusion 360 assembly for use in our Synthesis exporter. So, once you have your robot already properly loaded and has all your subsystems properly jointed, we're ready to go ahead and go to our joint setup window. Now, if you have not completed any of these steps, please see the description below or previous videos on how to set up your Synthesis exporter with your robot. So, now we can go ahead and click the Joint Setup button here and now load up the joint editor window. Now this editor window will show you all the joints currently in your Fusion 360 assembly. Now a quick tip, if you actually notice, all the joints are also listed over here. So these are all your fusion joints, these are all your synthesis joints. All that synthesis does is attach metadata for FRC robots to these joints. So if you wanna add it under your joint properties, you can do it by editing your actual Fusion 360 joints and all your FRC related options, you can do in the synthesis joint editor. So, once we have this open and all your joints are properly set up, we can go ahead and start navigating around our joints. So, we added some helpful features to help you identify which one of these joints belongs to which, for example, wheel inside of your assembly. So if you actually hover above any of these photos, you'll see that we moved your viewport and even highlight the attached components to that joint. So as you see, this Revolute 7 joint, the Rev7 is what it stands for, has highlighted this bottom, I think, left wheel. If you hover above Revolution 8, it or hovers this wheel. So this is very helpful for identifying which joint belongs to which subsystem, and it's even more helpful when identifying which side of the robot this wheel is, which you'll see we'll need to do in a few minutes. So, once you have gotten used to navigating and identifying your joints, you can start selecting the options inside the joint editor. The first option is joint type. Now, currently in Synthesis, there are two options, drivetrain wheel and mechanism joint. Drivetrain wheel is what is any joints that are related to your drivetrain. So for example, all the wheels that need to drive your robot. So in this case, in this robot, all of our joints are wheels. So all of our joint types are selected to being drivetrain wheels. Next comes the side, which is only an option for drivetrain wheel. This is what side of the robot is the wheel on. This is very important because if you mix these up, then your robot will either drive backwards or not drive at all since all the wheels are going in different directions. So, as you can see, the bottom of our robot, we've made the left side of our robot in the viewport. And the top, or the right, we have made the right. And then the last option is the wheel type. So since all of these wheels are just standard Andy Mark high traction wheels, we will select the wheel type to be normal, since these just act as normal wheels. If they were Omni or Mechanum, you can select the Omni or Mechanum option for each of these wheels. So these are the basic options for drivetrain wheels. However, if you selected a different joint type, for example, mechanism joint, you'll notice that all these options change to be related to that joint type. So the first option is the weight in pounds. Now this is the weight for the entire subsystem. So let's say this joint was an all robotic arm or an elevator. This would be the entire weight of that arm or elevator. This is very important so we can properly simulate an arm or an elevator or a ramp. For example, if you set this to zero, then when you simulate your robot, a giant arm swinging back and forth would not affect your robot at all because the simulator sees it as zero pounds. So you want to select this weight to be the entire subsystem that that joint is driving. It's weight. So for an arm, it would be like 20 pounds. For a ramp, maybe 10 pounds. Next is the driver type. So currently, we only support motors, but in the future, we'll start supporting pneumatics, uh, linear actuators, servos, or any other common FRC uh, manipulators or drivers, whatever you want to call them. So in this case, we're calling them motors, so we will only select motor. Now the last option inside the joint editor is the advanced window. If you click advanced, you get all the options that aren't required for the simulator to work, but if you're doing stuff like emulation, this is very important. So the first option is driver port. This is the electronic mapping of this joint. So for example, if you had a motor controller that's connected to either PWM or CAN, on your real robot, this is where you would enter that setting. So we support PWM and CAN, and then the port. The gear ratios, if this was a gearbox, you could enter the gear ratio for this mechanism. So this could be, for example, 10.71 if you're using a tough box from Andy Mark, or a Versa Planetary, maybe a two to one, you can set this just to two. Uh, for a lot of simulations, you can just enter one and get away with it, since uh, our motors inside of Synthesis are pretty powerful. And then the next option is sensor setup. So if you're doing any code emulation, for example, if you want to test your encoder-based autonomous, this is when you select all your sensor options. So currently inside of Fusion, we only support encoders, but we may in the future offer stuff like ultrasonic or limit switches. 
Next is the port. So encoders only use DIO. So you select which DIO port you want to use. Uh, most encoders use two ports. So for example, on this encoder, we'll use zero and one. And then the next option, which are again relating to encoders, are the tick per revolution. This is based off of your real life encoder. So you want to get the specs from that encoder or that manufacturer. So let's say we're using I don't know, a hypothetical encoder where every tick is equal or it takes a thousand ticks per revolution. We can slide it to a thousand. So once you're done configuring all your settings, you can save these. Now, quick note, the if you select a drivetrain wheel and do advanced, you'll notice that there is no port option. That is because inside of synthesis, we automatically assign the left and right side drive wheels to PWM zero and one. This just makes it for ease of exporting and ease of simulation. So just make that a quick note that inside of your code, PWM zero and one is dedicated to left and right hand side driving. So once you're done, you can go over and double check all your settings. So make sure everything looks correct and then you're ready to click OK and save. As you notice, as in every other option, this has saved to the Fusion 360 file. And once this is done, you are good to go ahead and export your robot into synthesis, which will be in the next tutorial series. Now, we know that joints is a pretty complicated subject and there's a lot of options and settings and quirks that may be confusing to new users. So if you have any questions, please either email us at frc at autodesk.com, comment on this video, or use our forms linked in the description below, and we'd be happy to help you out. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you in the next video. See ya.